Welcome to the Mind Vine Podcast, where we challenge the stigma associated with mental illness through conversations about a variety of issues impacting mental health. Here we bring you news, views, and interviews that intrigue, educate, and celebrate recovery. Leading us on this journey are the hosts of the Mind Vine Podcast, Daryl Mathers and Chris Bovey. Uh, this is the Mind Vine Podcast. Mm-hmm. I'm your host, Daryl Mathers, with my co-host, Chris Bovey, and we have a special guest. This is our last special guest of the day. Uh, we've had, uh, in honor of Bellet's talk, we've been at uh, 777 Bay Street here in Toronto. Um, we've had the Minister of Health and the Chair of Bellet's talk, and we've had a few other guests, and it's great to have uh, Menno Vasig here today, uh, formerly the uh, front man of Colorado. A lot of people would know you from that, but uh, as we're learning, you're now a music executive. or Oh, uh, I hate that word, but okay. <laughs> Uh, but, I knew uh, you would. But a, I knew you would. <laughs> but a guy, uh, a guy, I guess, working in the music industry yes, side of things yeah. as well. So yeah. So you're you're wearing a different hat and you're still a musician, but wearing a different hat in the industry, or at least a different hat than we're used to. Yeah, seeing my industry you. hat's a toque. My, my <laughs> That's band. That's a good one. I wish for I the could. band. It's usually a baseball yeah, cap. I like that. Um, so welcome and uh, thank you for being here on this. Uh, this day, which is a, you know a corporate initiative, but it like it allows organizations like ours. Uh, who are uh, in the business of caring for people with mental health to kind of kind of capitalize on the the buzz and the conversation to kind of talk about not only ourselves but the conversation of mental health in general. It's it's interesting that you said uh, it's a corporate initiative, but I've I've heard that people like is there is there a big um, are people kind of uh, giving Bell a hard time because the is that is that no? Part of the I dialogue? think I, I think it's just come you know because they are a big corporation. Yeah, I know, I know. I'm with yeah, you on that. Yeah, too. I just you know you feel like there might be um, I don't know if there's uh, strings or something else That's attached it, to it, right? But it, but it's really not. It's turned into this great day that allows organizations like ours to kind of leverage Bell's. Uh, name recognition and brand to yep. promote our own kind of uh, services. So it's yeah, totally. it's really, really, and really different. And they do raise a, a heck of a lot of money, right? Yes. Yeah. 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 I think they, the chair was on earlier today and she was saying they reached their five year goal, I think a couple of years in, and they reached their 10 year goal after their five year uh, mark. So. What do they spend it on? <laughs> I mean, I, I just like, I haven't yeah. really looked into it. I'm just curious if you they, guys know. Yeah, they've given money to industries like or corporate, like CMHA, Mental Health Associations, yep. uh, Jack.org this year, I think. So they give it back to mental health mm-hmm. uh, agencies yep. as well. So At one um, point, they sponsored a clinic in our hospital. Uh, okay. It was an adolescent yeah. clinic. So they Great. Actually, so it get, it's getting to people. Yes. It's yeah. actually getting into people's hands yeah. yes uh, yes we, we'd all like to get it more the in our more? hands <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah but yeah they, you can actually see it in 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 action I guess in the community so yeah. it's yeah it's you it's really evolved you can't knock that no yeah no. I mean I don't care if there's if, if there is strings attached and yes they're it, it's a big corporation and they're they're selling a brand like I don't care it's like if, as long know, as the money gets if to, they're, if they're raising go. money and they're putting it in people's hands well I, I don't know if you've been on social media at all today I kind of stay off it but it, like today is an interesting day because uh, people that I've never seen promote post anything about mental health they make a point of posting like several times right and yeah uh, I mean you wish you could talk more about mental health more than just one day but it is incredible to see people that typically maybe post dog or dog pictures or only pictures of their kids and all of a sudden they're they're talking about the importance of of talking about anxiety or or what i find really cool is they'll post something about a personal experience they've gone through that i would have not known about right mm-hmm. that they've never shared at, at a party or when i've run in some in different parts of yeah. my life but on social media on this day they tend to share for some reason yeah, I guess if a lot of people are doing it, it doesn't seem as weird. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so before we get into deep, because I've got a, a, you probably don't even recall, but you played our hospital. We years did. Years ago. Years and years and, ago. And I never got a chance to say, I've never had a rider oh. so amazing. Oh, wow. Well. So it, it was the best thing I've ever seen in my life, and it had, uh, oh. I show it to people. That, that's an it's antique. Fanta- it is yeah. an antique, but things like, we will walk your dog for you, like, it was such. It was such a creative ride. It was amazing, <laughs> but I think it just showed the spirit of the band at oh, the that's, time too. That's a backline tech. Do you What's like the, that? Oh yeah, here's yeah, the rider. Yeah, like oh yeah, pairs of underwear, clean preferably. Oh yeah, this um, is all this stuff. It was fantastic. Oh, <laughs> oh we like vodka back then, apparently. <laughs> this has got to be. Um, oh yeah, it's still uh, arts and crafts days. So that that's maybe. Um, 
That's maybe 15 years ago or so. It was a while ago, ago, but it was was great. Um, And I think it spoke to sort of the the creativity of the band and and where you're where your minds are at and kind of and maybe that's just about <laughs> mental wellness too about being on the road all the time you got to be a little bit uh, have fun so um but i want to you know talk i want to talk about the industry as well but maybe um we'll start off with with the record company and what made you decide really it was groundbreaking that you were going to try and support artists by providing money for their mental health no questions asked um what was the inspiration for that, and 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 what did you hear from other ind- from other music labels in that when you did that? Uh, two questions there, so, so I'll, yeah. I'll start with the first yeah. one. Um, so the first one: Why did I decide to do that? Uh, basically, I mean, I've been touring for twenty years myself, um, and I've seen the toll it takes on uh, that's taken on myself and the people around me in varying degrees. You know, from just kind of a bit of a toll, some wear and tear to like numerous friends killing themselves on, on the road. It's just like, it's, I'm not complaining at all. It's the greatest job in the world. And I'm so lucky to do it, but it really is a tough job. And, um, there's a lot of, uh, hazards. Like, um, I compare to like, you know, if you work at the concrete pipe company, like my grandfather did for 60 years, they give you a pair of, uh, safety glasses and steel-toed boots because there's giant concrete pipes everywhere and if one falls on your foot, it's going to crush it. And in the music business, there's a lot of hazards that can crush a person's soul. Um, you know, you are you tend not to make that much money. It's really long hours. It's a full-time job. You got people telling you you're great one day or the worst the next day. You know, there's like, there's there's public criticism, especially now with social media. And then... You're, you're surrounded by drugs and alcohol and late nights and you're away from your friends and family. It's like, that's just a recipe for, for um, stuff to, I don't want to say go wrong, but like be, be hard to cope with. Yep. Um, and you th- the reason I know that is because I've seen it happen so many times. Um, so I was like... I've, 20 years in, I've finally been able to afford to, like, to get the treatment I need and for my own stuff. And I realized how much easier it made it on my touring, my relationships with others, my bandmates, and all of us, too. Like some, some of the other people in my band like finally got to terms with some of the stuff they needed to deal with. And when we, when we got to that point, we realized how much, um, I guess, easier. Like it, when you have the actual tools to cope with these things, right. it's not witchcraft. Like, mm-hmm. And like you're kind of led to believe in the music industry that it, that it, that's just, oh, that's, that's the life. That's part of it. Just deal with it. You know, that's what it is. And like, and sometimes it's even glorified, you know, it's like rock and roll, man. And like, and it's super fun too. When, you know, you're like out drinking every night for a month and like hanging out late in bars, like, you know, sometimes you might maybe want to not deal with that. But when you start to realize that there's tools that can you're not going to change that lifestyle that, that like how it is when you're out on the road, people are want to go to bars to have fun and escape their stuff. And if you're in that environment every night, you just have to know that the tools are out there mm. and be aware of the situation. Um, and it really does help. But sometimes those tools are, they cost money and bands are broke <laughs> and they don't have any money. And I never did. We never did. So one day it just kind of popped in my head. I was like, this is a cost of doing business we need to give money to these bands to have these tools when they go out on the road. Mm-hmm. We have to do that. Um, so I just figured out how much we could afford and it just came out of our pocket and we just did it. So. Well, what does that like look like? What, was, what are tools on our, uh, like for dealing with mental health issues or your mental wellness? What does that look like when you're a band on the road in God knows where, in the prairies or in the States? It, it can look like a bunch of different things. I mean, Part of what I want to encourage is kind of a, a preemptive thing. Like, it's not like, all right, here, go on tour. Like, okay, if someone has a nervous breakdown or, like, their addiction just ends them up in a, in a ditch where they're about to kill themselves, like, then we'll deal with it then. Here's some money to deal with it. No, I want to, you know, encourage, let people know that, like, um, if your band's, like, lots of bands, like, they don't get along in certain ways. And I've had bands go to, like, uh, group therapy together and, 
I just wanted to say one thing. Like, uh, the money is completely confidential. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, I don't know who uses it um, and for what, because I don't want a band, um, you know, being afraid to check themselves into rehab because they think that if they do, the owner will find out and not want to give them any more money to market their record because it's going straight to heroin. Mm. Um, I don't, so I, I keep myself out of the equation. Mm-hmm. Right. That being said, like half the bands who've used it or have come and spoken to me and mm-hmm. told me about their experiences just because they wanted me to know. So I feel like I'm not going to use any names, but I can share those kind of experiences. Mm-hmm. Um, so um, where was I? Um, I well, I'll, I'll just jump in because I found it interesting like listening to you talk about the experience being a young band or young musicians and it kind of sounds like the Wild West. So certainly when you were going through it, it's what it sounds like. Just like, hey, you got great music. You have, you're an artist. Get out there and play and deal with whatever the environment is. And we were just talking to um, a hockey player who's now into law, and he's got a passion for mental health. And he was it's almost like the polar opposite experience. Like he was talking about being a young athlete away from home for the first time, and he's living with a family, and he's got support from the team, and like, they have orientation classes and like the complete opposite of huh. what you would probably experience oh, yeah. being a musician, right? Like <laughs> I imagine you were just so like, go play. Oh yeah. You know, it's like get in the van, here's your tour dates. I don't care how you get to them, get to them mm-hmm. and <laughs> collect the money and get home. Um, and that's part of the fun of it. Totally. That's the adventure. It's, you know, four four friends against the world. Um, but yeah, we're starting to, starting to become quite clear that um, there's a cost of, of doing business in the music industry that has been kind of put entirely on the artists mm-hmm. and it needs to be shared. Right. Um, I find it kind of absolutely absurd, to be honest, that at most of the record labels, like <laughs> my record label <laughs> isn't big enough to be able to afford this, unfortunately, but like at like major labels and like big indies, um, all the employees who go there nine to five, and go home to their family, and not to say that they don't also have late nights and stuff, but their health insurance is covered. Mm. Uh, they have dental, and you know they can get their glasses, and they can go to their therapist a few times a year on the company dime. Mm-hmm. Um, and the fact that the people out there, like in the thick of it, it's not even a question. And you know, on Bell Let's Talk Day, it's, it's, I kind of, in the music business, it's like, I wish it was like, Bell, let's actually do something day. Because mm. it's really been a, a buzz thing in the music business. Like, oh, let's talk about this. Look at all our friends mm. dying. And the margins are so thin and it's tough. But when it actually comes to putting the money where their mouth is, um, I really wish more, uh, more industry would step up. Um, mm-hmm. You know, there's so many sides of industry that make money off touring. There's, there's management. There's agents, there's labels, all people who stay at home in a more stable environment. It just really is, you know, you just, it's a different side of the business and they're all just collecting checks and not even a piece of that goes back into mm-hmm. healthcare for musicians. And um, it's, it's, uh, it's kind of gross, actually. And you talked about the music industry getting a lot more into the fame business and do you, you know, you see some of these young fame acts and it seems like let's just get them out and make as much money as we can until they burn out and we'll find a new one. And do you <laughs> feel like the music industry isn't as focused on longevity and creativity as it is on just squeezing as much money out of whoever comes through the, the door as possible? I, 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 in certain cases, 100 percent. I mean, you see it all the time. Like it like just, you see these. It's the ones especially who start when they're very young and don't have the support networks. I mean, you look at the Justin Bieber's, like, he clearly, like, is mm-hmm. having, having a rough go, this kid. Right. You, 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 you actually do, I was going to say you almost feel bad for him, but you do feel bad for him. Like, mm-hmm. he's not never going to have a normal life. And, like, yeah, he's got everything that everyone would dream for, but also he's got this whole other stuff that no one would ever want. Right. Um, and, um, yeah, not burning these people out. You see the burnout so often tours get canceled and you know they they cite uh they cite personal issues or they cite health issues and it's like no it's burnout mm. they can't mm. do it anymore like and that burnout like and everyone wants to know like oh is he doing drugs like so yeah he's probably doing drugs too to cope with this crazy schedule that you mm. have him on like so it's like but it's like 
it's part of that whole issue, you know. There, these, you can't like, you can't just blame a musician. And be like, oh, like he's a drug addict. Like, so like he should get his shit together. It's like, well, no, he's, he's using this stuff because it's part of this. It's part of the coping. the lifestyle, yeah. and it's a coping mechanism, you know. Yep. Well, when in your like career, or your uh, a time in your life where it turned for you, like you went from. Uh, you know, I imagine just trying to make it, right? Trying to make a living, trying to get your, your art out there to your perspective changing, like things need to change. Like we need to, as an industry or as musicians or like your idea for your label, like when did that start entering your, you know, your thoughts? Just when I've seen enough friends like uh, either die or be really sick or um, do, you know, 10 years in the music business working their butts off and then like you know being kind of unemployable often you know if you spend all your 20s mm -hmm. on the road trying to make it and then by the time you're um in your early 30s and it kind of hasn't happened and you haven't made it you have zero <laughs> resume mm -hmm. and um and often you, you know you've had some broken relationships because of what you've gone through and, and maybe some substance abuse issues and no money. And it's like all those things. And then it's like those musicians are often just, they haven't been given any tools to cope with that stuff after. And that's when it gets like especially sad too. Um, that wasn't really answering your question though. Your, no, <laughs> your, your, uh, your question was what again? No, uh, I was, I'm just, you know, you go from, uh, because you're kind of an advocate for music and mental health, right? Like, a lot of people, like, might see the issues that you saw. Like, I mean, you're not alone. You're not it's, the only musician to see friends die and see friends in, in crisis, but you chose to do something about it. I appreciate you saying that I'm an advocate for that yeah. in mental health. And I guess it, I'm, I'm kind of just, I want to be an advocate for, like, workers' rights. You know, that's what it is. It's, like, it's kind of workers' rights in any job. Um, and this being another industry where the people at the top exploit the people at the bottom mm -hmm. doing the hard work. That's, that's the basic thing of it. Like I, um, some of the bands have asked me like, yeah, can I use this on my like meds or whatever? I'm like, if you need, if you need to use it on something that you think you need, mm -hmm. that's fine. A band asked if they could use it on getting a tooth repaired while they, while they were on. I was like, if that, it's like, this is money I can afford. And if in a perfect world, in a, in a perfect world, we'd, all have this stuff covered by the government mm -hmm. and it wouldn't be an issue. In a second perfect world, the employers who are making money off these people would be paying for them to take care of themselves so they can do their job on the road. So um, I want to be an advocate for um, fair treatment of people who work hard mm -hmm. um, and fair pay and not the people at the top making all the money off the hard work of the people at the mm -hmm. bottom. Do you think there's a there'll be a groundswell? I mean, there's there's copyright for music and lyrics and things and protection and that end, but do you think bands will come together and say we demand those types of things and, and hold firm on whether it's through the the, the management companies or ticket man whoever to sort of say we're going to put a fund together to support? Yeah, um, and I just want to say there are some funds like. I know the major labels contribute to a great fund called the Univin Unison Benevolent Fund. I don't know if you know, it's fantastic. They do great work. Um, it's very much aimed at like crisis situations, which there are plenty of, and, and it helps in all different sorts. But um, I don't think it's taking steps to normalize the proper treatment of the, the workers, of the musicians, in terms of like, oh yeah, healthcare is just standard. This all should be a thing. And yes, I do think there needs to be a point, and I've kind of tried to get the ball rolling here, but it is pushing a boulder up a hill of mm -hmm. getting everyone to band together. Like, if all the people making the money off the bands, the agents, the publishers, the ticket people, the venues, all these people who are like at the top making good livings and mm -hmm. have CEOs with making millions of dollars and like, um, and um, if they could, if we could find a way to get together and, and take a sliver of everyone's income mm -hmm. and get health care for the people on the road, mm -hmm. I think it would make a huge, huge difference. Mm -hmm. um, and that's the end goal. But I, I, I mean, I'm, I was just one person with one idea and I have no idea <laughs> how to do that. <laughs> well, I was going to ask, like, the mu music industry is kind of 
on the other side of uh, major evolution, right? When the internet came out and uh, CDs and everything before it, although some of them are making a comeback, but they had to figure out how the industry worked. Uh, there was a period of time where they weren't sure if, like you know, uh, profit margins were going to be similar to what they were experiencing. Like in the oh, they always figure it out they, again, and they have <laughs> like, ooh, yeah, like oh, we're all going out of business, and yes. like then, but now I give it like five or six yeah. years, and they're back on yeah. top. Aside from the Nas- Napster era, <laughs> yeah. I think they yeah they know, freaked they, out for a minute, yes, but they, they f- figured it out. Do you think that <laughs> there's an appetite? Um, you know, for other labels, uh, for the music industry as a whole, to to start this conversation, like, well, they talk about it all the time. Yeah. Like when I when I announced this fund, I must have done ten industry panels. Like everyone be like, oh, way <laughs> to go! Like this is wonderful, and like you know, and we're talking about it. And then it's just like, okay, it's been a year, and we're talking about it, no and checks. I haven't seen one mm. person put like, I mean. I'm only giving like 1500 bucks a month per act. And like everyone's like, that's incredible. Like it's good for like, like six, 10 therapy sessions with for a couple of band members that need it most, which really help. Mm-hmm. But it's like, it's just a drop in the bucket. Yeah. Um, and um, people could even do less, you know? You could have like labels that are smaller than mine could have like, a, a thousand bucks total and be like mm. hey come to me if you need it and the, if the people who just come to me first can i can tr- see what i can do and i don't know it's just like just showing some amount of money where your mouth is mm-hmm. um i think is um is super uh, would, would be helpful um the other thing that we can do is basically in the indie world no one's in the in the union mm. Um, because it's a completely obsolete entity that doesn't really help people in our situation and actually is kind of tough to play gigs um, and collect union rates. It's basically impossible when you're starting out as a band, so no one's in it. And there is musicians insurance to the union, but no one's in it, so no one pays into it. But figuring figuring out a way to modernize um, uh, like a a union that makes sense for today... Mm. like. One thing that's interesting, like, Actra seems to have it figured out to some mm. degree. Like, everyone's in it. You have to be in it. Yeah. and You have to use it. And you have yeah, to like use it. And, and there's some kind of insurance coverage that comes with it. And, and there's, like, plans you can buy into that are less expensive. And, it, and also all your paychecks pay into it. And I haven't looked into it mm. in, like, great detail. But um, it's, like... It seems like there is some kind of model. Like, I'm a guy in a band, and like everyone's <laughs> like, figure this out. I'm like, well, <laughs> you know, yeah. I'm not going to, but I would love someone who could to <laughs> try. <laughs> right. Getting back to your roots as a musician and not an executive with a toucan. <laughs> um, do you still, are you still active? Are you still playing? Are you, oh, yeah, are, totally. You know? Like, yeah. what are you doing from a, from a playing perspective? Uh, I just played a gig last. Uh, like two weeks ago, uh, I had this new kind of side project, fun thing. Well, I guess if I don't have another band, it's a project. <laughs> um, uh, but it's, it was a fun group. It's with Sam Roberts and Chris mm. Murphy from Sloan and uh, Dave Monks from Tokyo Police mm. Club. And we made a record together. With It was so fun. Um, it's kind of uh, all of us are at the point where it was really nice to do something with absolutely no pressure, no strings attached, like just go and just have pure, pure fun. We said yes to everything. Um, really goes along with kind of what we're ta- talking about how how when you know you have no pressure how much easier it is mm-hmm. um and that was a really nice feeling for all of us to just like play this thing with like oh we just do whatever the heck we no label breathing down our neck no manager no agent nice. nothing just like here's we're putting out music and god has it been fun um but it also speaks to the pressures of like a young band that's like, all right, here's your one shot. We're putting in all your money <laughs> yeah. on you. Yeah. You're going to go on the road. You better make it. Mm-hmm. And they're like, oh, God, like, okay. <laughs> How do I deal with this pres- pressure? Yeah. yeah. Well, we actually had Tokyo Police Club play for a show, too. Yeah. Uh, Dave, I don't know if you'll be able to answer this question, but I've always wondered, because we've had a number of musical artists with a mental health connection come and play shows mm-hmm. through our hospital. And you start researching, and you see artist after musical artists that have a connection. And I wonder, is, there, is it a connection of being an artist and those pressures? Or do you think the music industry a- attracts people that may be having anxiety and things like that? And maybe that's their voice. For, you know, like... 100%. 100%. Creativity. Creativity. Yeah. 
I mean, I know for me, sometimes um, if I'm going through uh, like pain, uh, to put it out, to, to make it into art, kind of makes it feel less wasted, mm. like it was for nothing. Um, it kind of gives a purpose to it. And um, I, I mean, I've read a ton of studies about that. Um, I think it's like, I wish I should have numbers on me when I do stuff like this, but like, just go, <laughs> well, on, the, go on the internet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> go on the internet and it's, it's easy to find. Like musicians are like four times more likely to like suffer like mental illness mm. than other people. And it's like, yes, it's p- part of the environment, but also like people who want to like write songs and express their feelings and like talk, they're like often very emotional people. And um, I just read something about, I think it's like your right brain part of your brain uh, that, that uh, stimulates creativity is also somehow connected to the part that doesn't that deals with anxiety and stuff. Mm. I don't know if that's yeah. stuff like that, but I mean, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's we had uh, in October we had a musician uh, help us celebrate our hundredth anniversary. Her name's uh, Allie Walker. I don't know if okay. uh, you've come across her. Hundredth anniversary. Yeah, hundredth anniversary of her hospital. Yeah, so we had a big celebration. You've been working there the whole yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm hanging on. John Wise over there. He's been there but since the. Event. I always. I, her story was fascinating to me because she's only. I think she's pushing thirty, and she only started singing in high school, and uh, she was talking about dealing with her anxiety and severe anxiety, where it caused physical symptoms and. She, you know, was trying to become famous, and then decided I, she was going to write about her experience and how she's feeling, and and how the impact that it's had on her mental health. And she's kind of made that switch that it's not going to be about how many you know, songs, like, or how many downloads, or how many albums. It's going to be about what me, you know, what these songs and experiences mean to me, and the way she talks about her impacting her her physical health is like incredibly inspiring. Yeah, I mean. That's what I try to encourage a lot of bands and most artists that I work with, this is, this is their attitude, but um, that if you're doing it for anyone besides you, it's kind of set up for failure. Mm-hmm. Um, you have to be making this stuff and doing this like success. It sounds so cheesy, but like the journey mm-hmm. is a success and mm-hmm. um, just being creative and making stuff that you're really proud of um, is... Uh, it, can, it should be your only goal because as soon as you start comparing yourself to like measures of success, like there's always going to be something bigger, mm-hmm. always something bigger, and mm-hmm. um, it's a pretty scary way to live, um, and it's h- hard to do because mm-hmm. you're in a you're in a scene and you can see how all your colleagues are doing very easily on social media, and it's easy to get jealous and it's easy to get. Um, all those kind of um, emotions, but yeah, writing for yourself and and taking on and just going for an adventure, um, that's like the healthy way to do it. And that's one thing I'm quite sure of. I always wondered about the, the writing process because you always, uh, you know, in terms of bands that have like one big album, it's usually the first one and it's like it's easier to write the make the first album because it's all what you've been working for your whole life. It's the yeah. second and third albums that's, that's the toughest. But when you're a creative person like, like you are, the desire to express yourself, is it always there, like in every moment? Like just because you Not put in out every a, moment. It comes and goes, yeah. like anything else. Like, um, there's two type, tar- parts of, of the job of being a songwriter or a musician or creator. Like, there's a part where you sit down and you're like, I'm going to go actually do my job. You have, to, you have to sit down and actually do it people forget that sometimes like you <laughs> like you know it just doesn't just like pop into thin air like these people like work hard the successful musicians lock themselves in a room and they practice and they write and they record and they play and they do this job for long long hours and and and, and uh sweat over it until it's perfect in their heads or um so that's part of it and then the other part of it is like yeah you there's a the creativity kind of can come and go and I love the stories of, you know, people in the shopping mall and they write the lyrics on the back of their grocery list and it's like some hit song and that kind of stuff. Um, that's, yeah, that's like, you know, the romantic stuff. Yeah, you know, the stuff you see in movies. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. But, but that's real too, you know, it really, it really is. Like, it, you hear it all the time. People just kind of get, like, they see someone say something and, and they just have to just scrawl it on the napkin or and then whatever. It, then it takes some years to get the other seven songs for the album, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, that's it. Mm-hmm. That's great. 
That's it. You got it. And then you're looking at me like you got nothing. I else. don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just uh, I appreciate you coming and, yeah. and you know, hopefully we can encourage the music industry, even the, the large labels. They have EAPs to add artists to their employee programs and things like that. And well, my main we, thing I'm trying to do next, and it's like, um, I. Uh, it's a lot of work, and uh, I'm trying to get people to help me do it. But um, we get a ton of money from grants, mm -hmm. like a ton. We all get grant money from uh, like the provincial government and the federal government and like some private granting agencies, and it's all there across the country. It's amazing. We're so lucky. We're the, our, my American friends and bands are incredibly jealous. <laughs> and those grants cover anything in the business, any of your costs, like you, you can, you can rent your van to go on tour, that your tool, you got to have that van, you got to rent it. Here you go. You can take out a billboard at Young and Dundas. It's like so ridiculously expensive and no one looks at it except for tourists who've never heard of your band. And then your parents, when you're like, come take a picture of me in front of the billboard, you can, you can do that, but they don't. And I've tried this year. They don't let you cover basic health insurance for your bands. I'm like, can I just use this? So my bands who aren't going to buy U.S. health insurance at all, I'm like, buy it. You need it. If you break your arm, it's like $10,000. They're like, well, I'm just going to hope I don't break my arm because I need the gas money. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, well, if we can get the grant money to pay for it, will you do it? And they're like, oh, yeah, totally. And then so I asked the grant money people, and they're like, um, no, that's, that's not part of the music business. Mm -hmm. And people are afraid to, like, push the grant money people and be like, well, we have to make it like that. Mm -hmm. We want to cover these things, and I just want to put that call out to everybody to, like, we, ha we have to change that one thing that's super, super easy. Mm -hmm. Like, if you, can cover, if you can cover the gas of your van, you've got to be able to cover your, your singer who can't sing or is singing through pain because they uh, have a tooth infection and can't afford to get it removed on tour. That's a cost of doing business. It's a real cost, and it needs to be uh, even, acknowged. To even look at it from a dollars and cents, you want to keep them alive. Yes. So that they can <laughs> it's continue. It's awful to think to, it like yeah, that, but like, know. okay, if that's the way we want to look yeah, at it, yeah. Like, you, the, Let's keep them alive, keep so, alive we can, so we can create art. Like the Matrix, yeah, you know, you just barely keep them alive. You hang them by their neck in the back yeah. of the tour van and just send them out yeah. there playing <laughs> shows. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Yeah, of course. It's been great thank talking you. to you, yeah. and thank uh, you. we appreciate everything you're doing. No, thank, thank you. you. Appreciate thank what you guys are doing, too. Yeah.